Back in the 1980s and into the 90s, several companies such as JVC and Panasonic made these gigantic portable stereos, commonly called ghetto blasters or boom boxes. Some of them had very good sound, and the one I'm going to show you today, which has got a bit of a problem, was one of those units that had exceptional sound. It was a bi-amplified unit with two amplifiers for each channel for bass and treble driven separately to separate speakers. This is a Panasonic boombox also known as a ghetto blaster. This one features two cassette decks. In this case both of them are auto reverse and a CD player. This one was given to me and oh look at this it has a CD that has been sitting in here so long that it has stuck itself to the clamp. What free CD did I get? I have no idea who that is. But that was in it when I got it. I'm sure that the guy that owns this might want the CD back, or guy that owned it might want the CD back. I'll have to contact him. But um, I don't know if it works or not. As I say, it was given to me. These units here were actually quite popular back in the late 80s, early 90s when they were first introduced. This actually uses four amplifiers, two per channel. It has a separate bass and treble amplifier. So as with this here, four by four by amp system. Four speaker, four amplifier, power drive, as they call it, PDS. Graphic equalizer, tuner, tape, and CD. And these were a relatively expensive unit when they were sold. A lot of, uh, they were popular with a lot of teenagers, you know, the parents would buy them this for Christmas or their birthday, and this would be their bedroom sound system, and they actually had very good sound. So this was right at that, that point in time when we were uh, moving away from the individual components, where kids were buying the, or getting the individual components. They were getting these systems for their bedroom systems because they, they had good sound. Speakers were also detachable, so they could be separated to give even better sound, but it gained these had a good amplifier, good speakers, full function unit. Let's check this one out and see if it works. In case you guys didn't get the model number, this is an RX DT680, by the way. Power turns on the power. It's currently in tape mode. Uh, let's try the radio out first. So go to tuner, make sure the volume's not cranked up all the way. Tuner, put it on FM. That part works, sounds like it's working. Right channel. Equalizer works. Bonus. So far, this thing seems to be working. Let's try the CD player and see if the CD player actually will play anything. Oh, country music! No wonder I never heard of this guy. Change. I like to get my hands dirty. I like. So the CD player appears to work okay. I don't know what the problem with this is. I think someone would give me a perfectly good working unit without a problem. As you can see, they weren't very good housekeepers. This is how it was given to me with all this dust on it. But uh, yeah, the CD player appears to be working on this unit, which is good because on these uh, Panasonic units, typically if the CD player didn't work, it was a full replacement of the optical block so um, yeah Paul Brandt country artist okay never heard of him until now but then again I don't listen to country radio let's um, check the tape decks out maybe there's a fault with them so far so good though well if we look down into the cassette deck uh, both cassette decks appear to 
one looks just as bad as the other. These things don't look like they've ever been used. Look at the pinch rollers. They're like new. Like there's nothing. There's no dirt or any sign of oxide on here at all. This looks like it's brand new. Could it be that this tape deck has never been used? Like that. It's it's like it's clean. It's like this thing's never been used. It's dirty. I mean it was it was I don't know if it was used in a barn. I don't know. It could have been. Um, the fellow that gave this to me, they got horses, so this could have been used as a barn radio as far as I know. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's like, uh, it's it's covered in dirt and dust. I mean, look at look at this. You know how dirty this is. It's just filthy. But uh, but the unit itself, then the heads look are filthy inside. We'll try cleaning them up a bit. But this, I mean, this thing just doesn't look like it's even been used. You know, it's been sitting around for all these years, and, and, uh, amazing. An amazing find that I'm sure I won't have a problem finding a home for this one, especially if it's, if everything works on it. Yeah, there's no dirt on this thing at all. The heads are clean and nice and shiny. So to wipe the dust off them. Now, if they work, that's the thing is, I don't know whether the tape deck's gonna work. The belts may have turned to mush, but we'll find out pretty quick. I don't know how to select the decks on this thing. It's in tape mode. Which deck is selected? Deck selector one. Okay, so the tape decks don't... Oh, okay. Oh, tape deck's not working. That's no surprise there. Let's try the other one. Let's see if this one will work. That, that doesn't surprise me that the tape decks aren't working because it's been sitting for a long time. Okay, so we have a tape deck problem. So let's fix it. These tape decks use detector switches up in the top here, so it's it's entirely possible that just these detector switches are not detecting that there's a tape in place and that they just need to be cleaned. Um, fastest way to service one of these units is to actually pull the front off, which will remove the whole front here with the, uh, I think the, the front comes off on these ones. It's been a while since I've worked on one, but I believe the front comes off, so we'll try that. You see what I mean when I say this thing is filthy? Look at the cobwebs on it. This is how it was given to me, folks. A friend pulled up in a nice shiny new pickup truck. Said, hey, I got some stuff for you if you want it. I wonder if there's ever been any batteries put in this thing for the, for the clock. Nope, no batteries in there. That's for the uh, clock and station backup. A lot of times people forget those batteries and they end up going corroded. Cause problems. But again, an old friend pulls up in his nice shiny new pickup truck and said, Hey, I got an old stereo, an old boom box. He says, Do you want it? Might be good for your channel. And I said, Sure, what the heck? If you don't want it, I'll uh, take a look at it. And I'd say at this point, the radio works, as does the CD player. All the screws that need to come out have a dot mark beside them. I don't know if that light helps or it helps me, but I don't know if it helps the video or not. It might be a little overpowering for the camera, but it helps me see.
So these are the switches that I'm t t talking about here. This one in particular. This is the one here that tells the system if there's actually a tape in this position. So these other detector switches, that one there is for the type 1 or type 2. This one's got two switches over here. So this is a record for the forward position. This is the record lockout for the reverse position. And this one's going to be the type 2 tape. And this one's going to be the one to detect if there's a tape in the in the actual compartment or not. Because this is an auto reverse record, this, this side's just playback only. So it doesn't matter. It only needs to tell whether the tape is a normal tape or a type 2. It'll have the little notch in the top of the cassette. Like all type 2 tapes, like this one here for example, has a detection. So when the tape is in place, right when the tape is in place, it's going to be activating the switches. These two here for record lockout, this one here to tell it if it's a tight, high bias tape, and of course this one to tell if there's a tape in position or not. And these units will actually operate apart without the front panel on by just loading a tape because the front panel itself, the only thing it does is uh, hold the tapes. It has no other control. We're going to clean up these switches and see whether these decks will operate. So I'm going to use some deoxid D100 this time. This is just in a single shot container. Just This just doesn't spray all over the place. So we're going to spray a little shot into each of these little switches. Oh, and there's another switch here I just missed. Let's clean this switch here. This little switch here is to tell the mechanism when the when the head's up in play position. You can actually Unfortunately, this unit has been sitting so long that these switches are going to require a little more attention than just spraying some contact cleaner. I'm going to have to scrape the contacts to get these to work. They are in that bad a shape. The fact that these switches has, have been sitting so long without being used, I think they're pretty badly oxidated. So we're just going to scrape the surface a bit, just using the blade of my screwdriver, just to try and break off any oxidation that may have remained on these contacts. Same with on this one over here. and I'll give it another shot of cleaner. The way it's behaving, it's telling me it's one of these switches that's acting up. More than likely this one here. So we'll try this deck and see whether we're gonna have any better results. There we go, you see? That's exactly what it is, it's this contact was bad. Now it's in the play mode, and it would be playing if I had a tape in it. Reverse. There's reverse, you see? Let's try this uh, this deck out and see whether this, this one's working. This contact's still not... Uh, the switch here is still... When I push it up by hand, I'm making better contact. I'm going to have to pull the switch apart and clean it. What's happened is this thing is just from, from years of disuse, these switches have all gotten dirty and they're going to have to be cleaned. That's where the problem is on this one. So we can pull the switch apart. Should be able to pull the top off of it. There it is. Now we can clean the same way. Clean these contacts just using something to scratch it with. Um, even maybe some, um, let me see if I've got some, some fine grit sandpaper I could run through there just to clean them off a bit. This stuff should work. Aluminum oxide. This is a fairly fine grit. We'll just run this through here. This is a lot more difficult than it would appear to be because I've got a camera in my way. 
can't see what I'm doing. We'll just give this a little bit of a, a pull just to try and clear off some of the debris that's on the switches. I'm going to have to do the same thing for the record switches as well, the record lockout switches and everything. They're all going to have to be clean, but let's go through and clean these switches. Probably nothing on that side. Yeah, there isn't anything on that side of the tape. So that's got that one fixed. Let's do the same for this other one over here. We'll just pull this piece, the, pull the top off of it. And we'll just clean up the contact with my aluminum oxide paper. Okay, now that I've cleaned it again where I can see what I'm doing, I cleaned the switch again with the sandpaper off camera. Let's try it. I don't have the remote control. I don't think I have the remote. I have to look and see whether he gave me the remote or not. Check this out, the remote control on this. It's a little motor that turns a gear, which turns a little motor with a with a, uh, a worm gear on it, which turns another gear with another worm gear over here, which of course turns this other gear. So two speed reducers to take the high RPM of the little DC motor down to a low RPM to turn the control. There's the volume control on this. And I don't know that he gave me the remote for it or not. If he did, it would be great. But I gotta, I gotta clean the rest of these switches still. So this thing will make a recording and then we'll test it for record as well. And then get this thing out of here. The switch covers actually clip into place, so you got to get them lined up properly. Okay, let's try recording. I'm just recording this off the radio, which of course I've got tuned to my little test transmitter broadcasting royalty free music for my testing. So let this record for a bit and we'll check it and play it back.
see it's automatically reversed. It's still recording. I'm gonna let this entire tape record both sides. Then we'll check it out for playback. This is recording on high bias tape, which I incidentally have dozens as I was given a bunch of them from a friend that uh, had a bunch of stuff recorded and he archived it. So he gave me all his old tapes so I can recycle them all. If anybody's looking for good cassette tapes, I got lots. Okay, tape's finished recording. Let's uh, see how it sounds. Oh, that was interesting. When I went to fast forward, it stopped. That's going to be that still that contact that would cause that. I have to clean that switch again. play okay reverse has a problem the spool stopped turning that means it's gonna eat the tape we'll have to investigate that and see why that's not working next it appears to be working now but it's not, it has a problem as you'll see Usually these switches by operating them back and forth and on and off, uh, they will eventually eventually clean up. I'm just going to give the switches another shot of contact cleaner. I'm going to use a different one this time though, rather than use this deoxid. I'm going to just I'm going to throw some neutral on there, some of the good neutral, which has got some good solvents because this is the pure stuff without any solvents. I'm going to give it a, give them a shot of neutral in addition to this. This one. This uh, reel is not turning. You notice that? Interesting. This reel is not turning in reverse. Why? sticking a bit. Hmm. The outside gear is turning. You see? But the hub is not. Something's causing it to stick. That's the auto stop. The auto stop is triggered by the supply reel not turning. If I were to turn this, it would it would not auto stop. But this is sticking for some reason. Interesting. I think it may be the hub just needs to be pushed in properly. I pushed down all the way. See if it'll. Yeah, I think that's all it is. Is the hub was was out a bit there we go that's better okay now it won't eat deck of course it's not detecting that there's a tape in place that's this that's the switch here uh, still this switch here is still acting up that's the problem with these bloody switches is that once they get uh, once they get dirty 
or they get out of adjustment, we can sometimes bend them down a bit just to get a little more, a little more tension. But once the contacts get oxidated, they uh, it'd be better if I could replace the switches, but unfortunately, you're not getting these switches. Not now. We used to change these. When these were still current, we used to change these switches like they were going out of style. When the contact is made, it'll actually show tape one is in place. See, deck one lights up. But when I lift the contact, sometimes it doesn't make a connection. It's just, it's just dirt. It's just oxidation. And from years of sitting around wherever it sat around, maybe it was in an environment where someone was smoking. But uh, that's where the problem is on this, is all these switches. Another thing that happens on these units is even when the switches themselves don't get dirty, which they do, they oxidate and get dirty, but after many years of use, they will actually bend slightly just from loading and unloading a lot of tapes, and then they won't make a connection. So sometimes you have to make an adjustment to the switch itself just so that it will register. See, this one's not registering this tape, but if I go to this side, it's registering this tape. So I, I may have to bend this switch contact just slightly just to make a good connection when it's lifted into position. So once it's adjusted correctly, it'll show the tape as soon as the tape is inserted and then it will work. I think it's time to put this thing back together and make sure it still works once it gets back together. One thing to note that the most important switches of course are the two that detect whether the the mechanism is up or down. That'll cause it to do that shutdown. Uh, the other is a detection switch to detect if there's a tape in the deck at all and the record lockout switch is the the record bias switch is not quite as important because even if that switch has failed it will default to high bias. So if you're using high bias tape on it, it won't matter if that switch is in, is in place or not. If you're using standard bias tape, though, it will record it as if it's a high bias tape, which would uh, result in slightly lower fidelity. But typically, machines like this were not really used a lot for recording because they didn't have manual recording uh, level controls or anything. It was all auto level. So these type of units were mostly used to play back tapes or to make a copy of an existing tape but um, yeah, let's put it together and make sure everything still works. Front cover just goes back on like that. Close the two doors. Now I can put the screws back into it. should be noted that this unit could operate both on batteries and on power and it could also operate on 12 to 15 volts DC so you could operate it in a car or motorhome or boat off the DC source AC and of course internal batteries and here are the bi amp wiring for the speakers four wires to each speaker there you go unit is back together okay let's try it out Deck one shows. Deck two shows. I want to select deck one. That button for deck number one. Play. Deck two. you got your reverse mode here single play auto reverse and continual playback so in continual playback it'll just play the same tape over and over again depending on which deck if you've got two tapes loaded it'll play both sides of deck one 
and then play both sides of deck two, and then back to both sides of deck one, so you can have continual music. So if you had two 90-minute tapes, for example, you could have three hours of continuous music playing back on something like this. Anyway, that's it. Everything else is working on here. CD player works. Tape decks work. They record and play. Everything's back together, and everything is working. Once again, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.